namo bhagavate vasudevaya bhagavate vasudevaya nasya yata deya itaratas chate suvigya swarat janma dhyasya yatam vaya itaratas chate svabigya swarat tene brahma hridaya adikavaye muyanti yat suraya tene brahma rudaya adikavaye mujanti jasuraya tejo varimidam yata vinimayo yatra trisako mesha tejo varimidam yata vinimayo yatra trisako mesha namna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param dimahi namna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param dimahi o my lord shri krishna son of vasudeva o my lord shri krishna son of vasudeva o all pervading person of your godhead o all providing personality of God I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and is independent because there's no other cause beyond him and he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him it is he only who first imparted the vedic knowledge unto the heart of brahmaji it is he only who first imparted the vedic knowledge unto the heart of brahmaji the original living being the original living being by him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion by him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Water. Of water seen on the fire, of land seen in water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. Dharma pujita kaitravutra. Dharma pujita kaitavutra. Paramo nirmat saranam satam. Paramo nirmat saranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapo trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kimva purir ishvaraha. Kimva purir ishvaraha. Sadyo hridi avurudyate tra. Sadyo hridi avurudyate tra. Krite bihi susu subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in the heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Sukhamukad amrita dravi samyatam. Sukhamukad amrita dravi samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur aho raska bhuvi bhavukaha. Mohur aho raska bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire to of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Shambhatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtanam Radhyantakstohi Abhadrani Radhyantastohi Abhadrani Vidunati Surit Satam Vidunati Surin Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature to hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures or, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita or to hear from it directly through Bhagavad Gita is it self-righteous activity it is self-righteous activity and for one who hears about Krishna and for one who hears about Krishna Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart acts as a best wishing friend acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him and purifies the body who is constantly engaged in hearing of him nasta preshu bhadreshu nasta preshu bhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati nastiki bhakti bhavati nastiki in this way a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge in this way a devotee naturally of love is transcendental dormant knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, as he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, Tadarajas tamo bhava, Kamaloba dayas chay, Kamaloba dayas chay, Chaita etar navidam, Etta etar navidam, Stitvam sarve prasiddhati, Sitam sarve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, By development of devotional service, One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, One becomes free from the modes of passion and ignorance, And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus mature lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When all these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chityante sarvasamsaya. Chityante sarvasamsaya. Siyante jashikarmani. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus, the Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of Asamsayam Samagram. And enables us to come at once to the stage of Asamsha Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Shimon Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse Number 22, I think. Kim Shatra Bandan Kalino Pashristan Kim Kyatra Bandan Adam Pashritan Rastrani Vatar Avaro Pitani Rastrani Vatar Avaro Pitani Itas Tato Vasana Panavasa Itas Tato Vasana Panavasa Stana Vyavai Omuka jiva lokam. Snana vyavaya muka jiva lokam. Translation. The so-called administrators are now bewildered by the influence of the age of Kali, of this age of Kali. And thus they have put all state affairs into disorder. Are you now lamenting this disorder? Now the general populace does not follow the rules and regulations for eating, sleeping, drinking, mating, etc. And they are inclined to perform such anywhere and everywhere. Are you unhappy because of this? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. There are some necessities of life on a par with those of the lower animals. 
and they are eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. These bodily demands are for both the human beings and the animals. But the human being has to fulfill such desires not like animals, but like a human being. A dog can mate with a bitch before the public eyes without hesitation. But if a human being does so, the act will be considered a public nuisance and the person will be criminally prosecuted. Therefore, for the human being, there are some rules and regulations, even, fulfilling, even for fulfilling common demands. The human society avoids such rules and regulations when it, it is bewildered by the influence of the age of Kali. In this age, people are indulging in such necessities of life without following the rules and regulations, and this deterioration of social and moral rules is certainly lamentable because of the harmful effects of such beastly behavior. In this age, the fathers and the guardians are not happy with the behavior of, of their wards. That means their kids or whoever is dependent on them. They should know that so many innocent children are victims of bad association. Awarded by the influence of the age of color. We know from Srimad Bhagavatam that Ajamila, an innocent son of a Brahmana, was walking down a road and saw a Sudra pair sexually embracing. This attracted the boy, and later on the boy became a victim of all debaucheries. From a pure Brahmana, he fell down to the position of a wretched urchin, urchin meaning a child, and it was all due to bad association. There was but one, vic there was but one victim like Ajamil in those days, but in the age of Kali, the poor innocent students are daily victims of cinemas which attract men only for sex indulgence. The so-called administrators are all untrained in the affairs of a chatra. The chatras are meant for administration, as the brahmanas are meant for knowledge and guidance. The word shata, shatra bandhu refers to the so-called administrators or persons promoted to the part of the administrator without proper training by culture and tradition. Nowadays, they are promised to such exalted posts by the votes of people who are themselves fallen in the rules and regulations of life. How can such people select a proper man when they are themselves fallen to the standard of life? Therefore, by the influence of the age of Kali, everywhere, politically, socially, or religiously, everything is topsy-turvy, and therefore, for the sane man, it is all regrettable. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here we have a very clear understanding of what is the cause of degradation and fall down. It's called bad association, right? How much can we emphasize this? <laughs> This bad association is ruining children. Children ha don't have uh, the experience to uh, see through the veil of uh, the, uh, the karmis. When I say veil of the karmis, just like the, uh, the demons, they know how to veil themselves. Just like uh, Putana, she was a 12 mile long demon. But she transformed herself into a beautiful lady that looked like a woman from the demigods and came into the courtyard of Mother Yasoda and said, can I feed your child? Can I breastfeed him? I, I, want, to, I want to treat him like my own child. 
And Mother Yasoda was so impressed by her beauty that she said, yes, of course, and handed Krishna to her. Of course, Krishna was not in its state of illusion, even though he was in his infancy. And he understood this is a demon, but she's come to act like my mother, so I'll give her a chance to be my mother and accept her breast and, and suck her uh, breast just like I do my own mother. But of course, uh, Putana had put poison on her breast. But Krishna is antiseptic and prophylactic. Just like it says in the Ishopanishad, uh, there's a verse, uh, let's see which one it is, it's right in the beginning of the Ishopanishad that says, uh, Number five, number six, I think it's number six, seven, eight, yeah. So Krishna says, Pusan, uh, he says, Saprayagat chukam akayam avranam, anavritam sudam apapavidam. So what does apapavidam? means prophylactic, and sudam means anisect. Sudam apapavidam. So, this verse says, Such a person must factually know the greatest of all, the person I got it, who is unembodied, meaning he doesn't have a material body. He has a spiritual body, but not a material body. Omniscient, meaning he knows everything. Beyond reproach, that means everything he does is transcendental. Without veins, he doesn't have a body made of veins and bones and things like that. And uncontaminated, the self-sufficient philosopher who has been fulfilling everyone's desires since time immemorial. So when it says pure and uncontaminated, that is a translation of sudam apabavidam, which has uh, a meaning also, uh, just like every word in English, it may have a primary meaning and a secondary meaning. So it has a secondary meaning of antiseptic, and prophylactic. So antiseptic means it can kill germs. It can kill uh, contamination. And prophylactic means it can be, it protects, it's protected. It has some protective uh, coating or something that, that, that keeps it from getting contaminated. So therefore Krishna is pure, apapa, and uh, Apabhavidam, uh, sukam, pure, and apabhavidam, prophylactic, or antiseptic and prophylactic. So, uh, that's Krishna, but that's not us. Uh, when we're not trained, we're not able to purify something, and we're not able to protect ourselves from something, especially when one is a child. So, therefore, uh, Prabhupada is explaining here that bad association, especially by giving the example of uh, Ajamila. He was just like a young boy, maybe 16 years old, and he saw a Sudra couple, man and woman, somewhere in a forest. As he was walking through that forest, he saw them engaged in a sexual embrace. And this ruined his whole life. Now imagine today with the the internet and videos and movies and advertisements and all this, all these things, you know, and, and uh, designer clothing, you know, designer clothing uh, for women nowadays becomes more and more revealing of their bodies. Prabhupada once explained what is a mini dress, a mini, I call it mini dress, I think, yeah, uh, mini skirt, yeah. Uh, he said, it's an advertisement. A woman is advertising herself to uh, the men. So we see that, uh, that uh, more and more, uh, all these types of advertisements of, for uh, uh, sense gratification are taking place. You'll have uh, a uh, Dodge Ram. Uh, we, 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 of course, say Ram. 
cars say ram, you know. <laughs> anyway, a Dodge Ram, you know, a muscle car. It's called a muscle car, right? It's this big, powerful Dodge, a 350 or a 450 or a 950, you know, an extremely powerful uh, pickup truck. And right next to it is, is a woman with a bikini on. And it's not even a bikini, it's a string bikini that's even less than a bikini. And, uh, you know, pointing to it with a big smile, you know. And, and this, the psychological effect of looking at that advertisement is, if I want the woman, I have to get the car. That's, that's what the whole idea is. It's, it's Freudian philosophy. They, they uh, in the 1930s, uh, some politicians in North Carolina invited Freud's daughter and his leading disciples to come and explain to them how they could use Freud's psychological, let's say, uh, theories to influence the voters in North Carolina to vote for them. And by golly, they won the election. And <laughs> the big industrials and money tycoons in New York read about it. What did they do? They immediately invited, well, since Freud's daughter and uh, his leading disciples were in the United States, they invited them, paid for their trip and everything to come up to New York and talk to them. And then they asked them, how can we sell our junk products to the public using your dad's uh, psychotherapy or psychological uh, discoveries and they it worked nowadays you, you have all these you know just like the advertisement of the muscle car uh, everywhere you'll see this type of uh, advertisement where in order to get the sense gratification you have to buy the product that's the whole point <clears throat> so uh, this is all bad association and it's and it's uh, uh, omnipresent or it's, it's everywhere uh, you know the whole society is drenched in this nonsense whereas previously well you can understand why uh, Muhammad insisted that women have the burqa it's a black dress that covers them that covers their face maybe you can only see their eyes that's it right uh, so he didn't you know the whole idea is that you know uh, men naturally have this attraction uh, for uh, pretty women, so therefore the woman should hide herself completely. Well, this also influenced India to a certain degree. Uh, and, and if you go to Rajasthan, all the women, even though they have saris on, they cover their face with the sari. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Uh, yeah, they cover their face with the sari. Well, it wasn't because of Islam. They were already doing that way before Islam even became a religion, right? The idea was, and it was even more severe, a woman would always live on the top floor of the house and hardly ever came downstairs <laughs> to the street. And women never walked on the street. If they were, had to go somewhere, and this was practiced in Bengal for, until very recently, a woman would be put in a palaquin and, and four people would carry it. And, and the palaquin was closed. You couldn't see her, see her if she had to go from one place to another. Well, that is kind of ex extreme, but it's to safeguard uh, the women from unscrupulous men who have uh, these uh, exorbitant, uh, let's say, uh, material desires. So. Uh, the whole idea is bad association, whether you hear something, see something, uh, is going to affect the mind of a person, especially young kids. So how many times is Prabhupada going to repeat this? He, he just repeated it here. Uh, he says, one can acquire the respective qualifications of one's own efforts, by one's own efforts, and thus the son of of a Vaishnava can become a Malecha, or the son of a Chandala can become more than a Brahmana, all in terms of their association and intimate relation 
with the Supreme Lord. So if you have bad association, you can be born in a Brahmana family and you'll become a Malecha or a Chandala, which is the lowest of low classes. Or if you can be born in a Chandala family and associate with a with uh, the Lord through a pure devotee, you can become uh, more than a Brahmana. You can become a Vaishnava. So Prabhupada proved this. He said, it all depends on our association. Therefore, Prabhupada wanted to build temples. Not that they're so important, but it is important in Kali Yuga so that there can be good association. Therefore, the temple has to be so organized that everything going on in it is transcendental and full of bliss and knowledge and uh, uh, you know eternal benefit for the people that come. So that's why when people come to a temple, you know, they they expect there it's peaceful, it's clean, it's regulated, and people are nice. Ah, now, one time, one uh, American guy came here. And I saw him walk in the door. So I, I said, oh, hi, how are you? What, what's your name? And he said, so-and-so. I said, oh, good. I said, uh, is this the first time you've come to uh, Hare Krishna Temple? He said, no. Oh, really? Uh, where did you attend the uh, temple before? He said, in New York. I said, oh. I said, do you know uh, Ram Bhadra? He said, no. I said, do you know so-and-so? No. Do you know so-and-so? No. I said, wow, you went to the, their temple? You don't know any of those people? He said, no, you're the first devotee that's ever talked to me. <laughs> so he went to the temple in New York many times, and nobody talked to him. I'm the first devotee that ever talked to him, right? So we should not do like that. We should, when people come to this temple, we should greet them very warmly as if they're a member of our family and ask them who they are, what, where they come from, and, and so forth. So, so that greeting is important. If you go to these well-organized Christian churches, they have a greeting committee, and they specifically train people how to greet people who walk in for the first time, or walk in any time, whether they're regulars or whether they're first time. They greet them as if they're a dear family member who went on a long trip and finally has come b back with such warmth and affection and uh, happiness, you see. So that, that's called the kingdom of God. By the way, you know what happens if you go to Vaikuntha for the first time? You know what happens? Lord Vishnu is standing at the door and shakes your hand. Did you know that? It's in the Bhagavatam. Did you ever read that? No? Okay. Yeah, you are, you are welcomed by the Lord himself. Yes, I, and he's very happy to see you after such a long hiatus, a long period of being away <laughs> in Maya. So this greeting is extremely important. Say. And then when people come... Sitting next to someone who's there, you know, like a stranger to the temple is important. And you build up a conversation. People get become friends over food, right? But this is not just food, it's prasadam. So we should always seek to talk to people who are new or people that you've seen regularly but never got to know. Because Krishna conscious is all about association association with devotees. And whether you're serving with someone in the kitchen or you sit next to someone you don't know in the prasadam hall or you see someone walk in the temple for the first time, you should be fast on the draw. If you ever go to these cowboy movies, you see it, you two cowboys like this, you know, one is standing there, one is standing here, you know, and then all of a sudden they draw and they shoot, right? Well, you've got to be fast on the draw whenever any, anybody walks into this temple. Right away you should understand, ah, this is my opportunity to preach. But preach by good behavior, not preach like, you better surrender to Krishna, otherwise if you don't accept Lord Chaitanya, you're a demon. That's not preaching. 
That's, that's chasing people away. You see, preaching is making friends with people, being kind, offering to him <laughs> for shot him. Like one man came, he's a friend of mine, yesterday, but he didn't want to come into the temple. So he stayed outside, he had a mask on, you know, he had his, his bottle and, you know, of, of uh, uh, hand sanitizer in his pocket, you know. <laughs> he had every kind of precaution because he's, he's afraid of getting COVID-19, right? So anyway, he, he waited outside, and he waited for me to come. I was, I was giving a class, and he waited, and then I came out, and he handed me this $300 check. He said, this is for your food truck. I said, oh, thank you very much. I said, would you like to come in? Oh, no, 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 he said, I don't want to come in. <laughs> I said, okay, can I get you some Prashad? Oh, Prashad, you have some Prashad? I said, yes. So, of course, we had it right there at the entrance, right, the whole plate. So, and I purposely opened it up, I showed it to him. I said, oh, my God, he said, this, you didn't have to do that. It's so nice of you to do that. I said, no, it's, it's just normal courtesy at this temple, right? He said, can I have one more for my wife? I said, sure, no problem. So we went in and got it. And I said, I, I have to give you some of our kir or so. You know, it's very special, you know, it's payasam, you know. He said, okay. So, you know, he ends up with two big hot plates of prashadam and a big cup of, uh, of uh, sweet rice. He said, thank you very much. You didn't have to do that. I said, no. I said, it's normal courtesy here. <laughs> so, do you think he'll give another donation? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and why is he giving donations? This guy is one of the cheapest guys in the world. He's, he, he doesn't part with money easily. But I've cultivated him for at least 30 years. I know him almost from the beginning when I came here. He's a very cheap guy, right? But over the years, continually, he's seen what we do. So now he tells his friends, you should donate to them. They're good people. <laughs> and he is a very wealthy guy. A very wealthy guy. Right? He's a Gujarati guy. But he's tough, you know, he's, he's, he's a tightwad. But yet, but yet he's a good person, you know, morally very, very good person. And he appreciates prasadam, especially when it's simple, not complicated, you know. So he likes dal, rice, and sabji, right, and a little bit of halva, right. This is so you see, this is, this, this is what we're supposed to do as devotees is to encourage people to become habituated to good behavior and good association. That's what we're supposed to do. And you can't do that unless you're happy yourself. If you're unhappy, how can you be, how can you make another person happy? It's impossible. You have to be happy. You have to be satisfied, not with money, but with service. If you're satisfied with service, then everything else will be provided by Krishna. You see, we have to have that faith. So here, and this verse today is very interesting because it's saying, uh, it's, it's pointing out all the things that would bewilder a person. And it's all based on the leaders of society. He said, the so-called administrators are now bewildered by the influence of this age of Kali. What's the influence of age of Kali? It is... Uh, it is uh, hypocrisy and quarrel. People are lying and they're li and they're and they're saying that they're not lying and they're arguing about it, right? And they're engaged in all kinds of uh, of unsavory behavior. So, and thus they have put all state affairs into disorder. Well, that's what's going on right now. Are you now lamenting this disorder? Yeah, this disorder in society today. We can see it. There's people rioting, people shooting each other, people uh, stealing. Just like uh, <laughs> uh, we, we, we just did this uh, uh, virtual Diwali uh, video. I don't know if any of you saw it. It's a three-hour video. It, was, it, was, it came on 
uh, the uh, uh, Seattle Center publicized it. About uh, 5,000 people saw it. Of course, nobody saw it in the temple here because we, we don't pay attention to our web page. So, but other people do. <laughs> it's a fantastic virtual Diwali. Fantastic. There's uh, so many nice uh, different uh, uh, things. It took a long time to make this video. You should see it. It's, it should, of course, our, our <laughs> uh, it, it was, uh, it's on uh, Northwest Share. Uh, or you go to uh, uh, the uh, Seattle Center. You just put Seattle Center, and then uh, uh, you'll see uh, and Seattle Center Diwali uh, Festival 2020, uh, 20, and it'll come up right away, and you can click on it. It's three hours of entertainment and different groups, and you have uh, Jay Inslee glorifying. Uh, this time we did Northwest Share, because this year we... Uh, even in Microsoft, we're collecting for Northwest Share, the food truck and the school and, and the cow protection and so forth. And uh, Jay Inslee spoke. Pramila Jaipal spoke. Uh, Susan Delbanet spoke. Uh, Claudia Balducci spoke. Ron Nellum spoke. And uh, Manka Dingra spoke and Vandana Slater. All those people are politicians, right? Jay Inslee's the governor, and uh, Mrs. Jaipal is a member of the uh, uh, United States House of Representatives, and uh, Ron Nellums is the, is the director, of the, uh, the overall director of the Seattle Center, and uh, Vandana Slater is a member of the House of Representatives in the state of Washington. And Susan Delbanet is also a member of the uh, United States uh, House of Representatives. And so forth. All these, all these big people are just talking about, you know, Diwali and wishing everyone a happy Diwali and, and explain and actually glorifying Northwest Shares' work and so forth. So... Uh, that builds up trust. By the way, we're making a short version of that three-hour program for uh, Microsoft. See, once people trust you, then they listen to what you say. Right? But to build up trust could take many, many years. It's not easy. When I first came here, uh, there were more deities than devotees. And on a Sunday feast, maybe three or four people would come. And we had a broken down house with rats and cockroaches. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> however, it took at least 14 years before people started taking us a little seriously. 14 years, right? Because the reputation of this temple was so bad that nobody wanted to come. And by it, man, also you have to say, this was a remote place when I first came here. Nobody thought anyone would ever come, and nobody did come for a long time because it was far away from Seattle. And there was, you know, none of these uh, houses, and uh, there was, it was a dark, let's say, far away place from uh, Seattle at night. You could hardly see anything. They didn't have all these lights and roads and everything. It was a small road here, right? But, uh, and nobody thought that this place would ever evolve. But, but look how it's evolved, right? It's one of the best places to live in the whole United States, right? But no one could see that potential. And I didn't see that potential, but I was just determined to stay here and try and make it work. So anyway, it takes time to build trust. And uh, one time this devotee here, this was a long time ago, he came up to me and said, oh, Hari Vlas, I have a great idea how we can make a lot of money for this temple and build a beautiful temple. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, what's that? He said, it's called, uh, it's called uh, multi-level marketing. I said, what? what what's what's multi-level marketing? 
You don't know? I said, no, no. I said, no, it's, it's Amway. Amway multi-level market. I said, what's Amway? He said, well, it's a Christian organization, but they sell these fantastic products for the house. I said, what does that have to do to Krishna consciousness? Oh, no, no, you don't understand. You're going to get a downline. I, I said, what? A downline. I said, what's a downline? Uh, it means that every month you get checks. They come in the mail, you know, $100, $200, I said, well, why would they give us a check? Well, y you, have to, you have to just uh, convince them to buy the products. I said, well, wait a minute. I mean, this is a temple. I mean, we're trying to convince people to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> why would we convince them to buy a product? He said, no, no, you don't understand. I said, what do you mean I don't understand? He said, no, you don't understand. I mean, this is to build a new temple. It's for Prabhupada, it's for Sankirtan, it's for, you know, book distribution. I said, I, I don't see the correlation here. <laughs> I, I, I said, Prabhupada tells us that to avoid doing business and rather just do preaching. He said, no, no, you don't understand. I said, okay. Well, look, uh, <clears throat> why don't you do it and make the money and donate it to the temple? He said, no, 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 you need the downline. I said, I don't need a downline. I, I got an upline back to Godhead. <laughs> you, you see what, what happens? You know, and this was a devotee, an initiated devotee, right? But from that point on, all he did, I mean, I told him, I said, I don't want you to talk about this to anyone in the temple. He said, no, no, I, okay. I said, but you got to understand. I said, I understand now. And I don't want to hear any more about it. <laughs> but he went to every devotee behind my back, and he tried and convincing them to become a downline, you see. I mean, it's like a disease. It's like, it's once it gets into the mind, instead of thinking about, you know, uh, Bhagavad Gita, they're thinking about Amway. You see how uh, easy it is for do even devotees who are chanting Hare Krishna to get diverted. As soon as that desire for material advancement becomes. So, anyway, it's all bad association, and we should cultivate good association because that's what changes a person's life, not bad association. Bad association changes life also, but to forget Krishna and go into sense gratification. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? That's uh, that sounds like a mantra. So uh 